Now that we've talked about the structure and the functionality of Java Cyclic Barrier, let's walk through its key methods. As you can see, like Countdown Latch, Cyclic Barrier also has a very simple API. And only a handful of its methods are commonly used, most particularly the constructor and the await method, as we'll see. The constructor initializes an instance of Cyclic Barrier to trip when the given number of parties await on it. It turns out here that the word parties is really the same thing as threads in terms of the usage of a cyclic barrier. In particular, a cyclic barrier requires a fixed number of threads that's identical to the number of parties. It can also be given an optional barrier action, which will be executed when the barrier is tripped. This barrier action is always performed by the last thread that enters the barrier. And when this action occurs, all the other parties or threads will be suspended, so you don't have to worry about corruption due to race conditions. The barrier action is mostly useful for updating any mutable shared state before any of the parties continue on with their processing. The barrier's count is automatically reset to the number of parties after the barrier is tripped. The key methods in this class are used to wait until all parties call a wait on the barrier and then reset it automatically. The threads that call a wait can decide whether to continue on to the next cycle or not. The await method with no parameters will block until all the parties arrive the barrier is manually reset, we'll talk about manual resets in a minute, or the thread is interrupted. Await returns the arrival index of the thread at the barrier, and this index is counted down. So as the, the threads show up, the count goes down by one from the original party's amount provided to the constructor. If barrier await returns zero, that means it was the last thread to arrive, and therefore, you can use that as some kind of flag or indicator in lieu of barrier actions if the parties don't have to be suspended when run. It's probably a good idea in practice to use the barrier action because you can be assured that things are properly synchronized and it reduces, reduces the chance of race conditions. There's also an await method that takes a timeout. So the way the semantics of this works is it'll, this method call will block until either all the parties arrive the barrier is manually reset, thread is interrupted, or the timeout elapses. Note it's also possible to manually reset the barrier to its initial state, which was given in the constructor. You can call the reset method manually. If reset is called, then any of the parties waiting at the barrier receive a broken barrier exception rather than just the normal semantics of returning from a wait. So this can be used as a way to indicate whether something succeeded in the normal way when everybody awaited, or if you were manually reset, you'll get the broken barrier exception. So the client code, the calling code, can figure this out. And that's the end of the key methods for Java Cyclic Barrier.